Hello Warp Forgers, BJ back with a really exciting deck guide today. Guys, I'm, I'm super, super excited. This is my first proper, like, competitive, I think this might be tier 1, but it's definitely either high tier 2 or tier 1. Like, really, really competitive uh, Gene Stealers cult deck. As you can see from my uh, global rating here, uh, it took me not many hours to basically climb uh, from 2500, which is where I started uh, as a legend player with the Gene Stealer Cult. And as you can see, I've already hit 3k in a matter of a few hours. And, uh, and this deck has been absolutely popping off. Not only is it really powerful, but it's super fun as well. Um, and it's got enough complexity because there are kind of like oh, quite a lot of... Um, different lines and combos and ways to play it so i'm going to come on to all that so what we're going to do in this video is we're going to do quite an in-depth deck guide we're going to go through what the win cons are of the deck we're going to talk about several of the combos that you're looking for and when to go off on them we're going to talk about the mulligan we're going to talk about the defense card and the office offense cards to use and to look out for and then we're going to talk a little bit about alternative cards because as I was streaming and as I was um, talking to people about this deck, they'd always ask me, well, what about this card? What about this Warlord? What about this card? So I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, different cards, different Warlords, and why some of the cards that you might think you're going to see in this deck aren't actually in there as well. Uh, and then what we'll do is we'll do a quick match analysis where we just look at an example of bringing all that together. And then we're going to jump into uh, a whole range of like live games against like top meta decks at Legend Rank so you can see the deck in action now bear in mind i am still learning this deck i have by no means mastered it and there are also a couple of cards which i'll point out that i don't yet currently have in my collection which will absolutely go in this deck once i finish it uh, so with that said let's jump into the deck itself okay now i call this deck four by four uprising and it is using the legendary warlord, which is Primus Safa Rihanna. Um, but there is also a alternative version, which I'll show you later, which is uses the beginner warlord, which is just as powerful. Actually, technically, it's potentially more powerful, but it's not as consistent. So I will show you that deck as well later. But we are using Primus Safa Rihanna. And the reason why I call it four times four uprising is quite important. It sounds like some sort of big brain, uh, you know, a mathematical thing but really all it is is that um, we essentially um, don't run more than four stratagems so we only run four stratagems in the whole deck and the second four stands for the fact that you want to only run troops that cost four or less there are a few exceptions we'll come to that but you've got to have a really good reason to run a troop in this deck that costs more than four all right and the idea of the times four is that it, the effects of putting these two things together is exponential right like if you if you stick to those two rules this deck is going to go off so let's take a look at the cards all right so this is the deck now the win condition of this deck is essentially to draw very consistently into the rampant infestation card which is an absolutely S tier card. I can now confirm. <laughs> Papa Beard was right, if you've seen our review. Uh, this card is b bonkers, and the deck would not work without this card, okay? Now, what? because we only have four stratagems, two of them are this, which means that even if you don't get any stratagems in your opening mulligan, and you use your hero power, your warlord talent, to draw a stratagem, which it can do, it can choose to draw stratagems, troops, or heal, if you choose to draw a stratagem, you have a 50% chance, the very first time of doing it, of drawing one of these, okay? Obviously, if you don't draw this, it then becomes a 66% chance. So in other words, by the time you've basically done your hero power twice, you should have one of these, all right? Now, when we have one of these, the win condition for the deck is that we basically go off on a massive combo, and there are several different combos we're gonna talk about in a second, and we go off usually on either E6, or e7 or occasionally e8 but most of the time e6 and e7 and i'll talk through why and when you go through uh, you go off on those different levels okay and when you when i say go off we are going to create a board state like you haven't seen before maybe you've seen it with a turvagon combo but that usually happens way later for turvagon 
this is going to be happening around E6, not E9 and E10. <clears throat> All right. And basically, once we create that board, we essentially have won the game because our opponent can't really come back from it. Um, there's several things against different matchups that we can we can tweak in that to kind of ensure that we win the game. But I'll talk about that when we look at the combos. Okay. So, as I said, we don't we only run four spells. Now the four spells are the perfect ambush, which makes a unit invulnerable. <clears throat> We have two copies of the Rampant Infestation, and the only other one that we have is the Living Icon, which is a three drop. Now, when I first started playing this deck, and I think either is viable, so if you don't have this Legendary, I don't think that this Legendary is essential. So you can drop this, uh, and I started, as I said, I, I, I actually started without this. I've played about half games with it and half without it. Now, if you don't have that, what I recommend putting in instead is the three energy gestalt energy because what this does is it gives us an alternative win con particularly once we've gone off and gone wide if we haven't got off one of the certain combos where we have a bigger board um, as in a taller board so this can then go off and basically help us finish the game so i think this is a fantastic card it's also a beginner card and as i say i ran it in the deck for most of the time but there is um uh, an advantage to using Gestalt Energy, and there's a slight advantage to using Perfect Ambush uh, as well, which we'll come on to. Now, obviously, uh, I, the second part of this was, I said, you don't want to run any troops that cost more than four uh, energy. Now, I only own a single Gene Stealer Familiar. If I owned a second one, it would absolutely be in here. So if you've got that, you want to put two in. The card you probably want to drop to do that is this Neophyte Heavy. I've been running like 1.2 of these. Uh, I just very recently got the second Nexos, so I dropped one of the Neophyte Heavies. Uh, and if I get the second Familiar, I'll probably drop the second Neophyte Heavy. Okay, but if you don't have uh, some Picard, it's perfectly reasonable to play this because it's a three drop and it works quite well. Okay. Now, where have I broken my rule of going above a four energy unit? Well, the first place I've broken the rule is the Metamorph Icon Bearer. But there's a very good reason for it. The first reason for running this guy is you can play this body on E5, which is often the turn before you go off on the combo. And if you play it on E5, not only does it obviously compete and trade the board, it's just a distraction, you don't care, uh, you just want to put it out. But what it does is it says choose a two cost gene stealer cult troop and put two copies in your hand. Now, we only have, if you look at uh, the card pool, at two drops, and you look at troops, there are only four troops in the deck. But when it says choose, what it's going to do, it's going to show you three options, and it won't show you a duplicate. So it won't show you, for example, you know, three of the Neophyte hybrids. It can only show you one of each. So in other words, of the four two drops that are in the faction, there's only one of them that won't be in the choice. All right. Now, the one that we're mainly looking for is the flank option, right? This is really big in some of the combos. So we're really looking for the Neophyte Trooper. That means there's a 75% chance that we will get that every time. If we don't get that, then obviously we can go for one of the others. I quite like the Neophyte Specialist. Um, this one's okay too, but really um, the flank is particularly good um, because it triggers some of the combos that we're looking for. Okay. So the other second reason why we run that, that card is that it's a good refuel card. So in other words, if we've had to throw some bodies out early to compete for board, or if we have gone off on the combo, but it was a weak combo and it didn't finish the game, maybe we're playing something like Gas Control that could be more resilient or Imatech or something, and we need to refuel our hand, this is a great card for doing so. So for that reason, uh, we do run two copies of this card. Very important card. Now, the only other place where I've broken the rule is uh, the uh, legendary Reductus Saboteur. This card is absolutely fantastic, and it's sometimes a very good card when we want to delay the combo to E7 or E8. We might do that because we have this card, so playing this card down, for example, the turn before that is really good. It's also really good combining with the new... Uh, the other one of the stratagems that we picked which is the perfect ambush obviously putting it down with this making it immune 
or putting it down because it's in stealth, then the next turn attacking and putting this on uh, is just it will get you absolutely insane value from this card. Um, it also has a very unique ability in the faction in that it can lead to the AOI, uh, AOI the AOE, the area of effect, uh, with its blast four and its ability to dis uh, to deploy concealed explosives. So. This is the only exception that we are running. Now, I did start off with the five drop, the five drop legendary, which is uh, Sa uh, what's his name? Sanctus, is it? Sanctus. And you can run this card if you own it and you want to put it in, but I got quite ruthless with it. Uh, when I cut this guy, that's when I knew I was being super ruthless because this guy is very, very good. He's one of my favorite cards in the faction, um, but. I strongly, I really am convinced that he does not belong in the deck and that there will be um, often uh, many games where you'll draw him and you wish you didn't have him in the hand because of, again, this being a combo deck and you're looking for very specific things. And one thing I will say is you might think, yeah, BJ, but it's just one card. But actually, the, I wish I could have 15 cards in my hand because this, one of the challenges with this deck is managing your deck because you're trying to have 10 cards in your hand but you really don't want more than that, right? So uh, if you have one of those taken up with Sanctus or Kelamoff or some card that you don't want, then it basically is reducing the power and effectiveness of your combo, hence the 4x4 four four uprising rule. Okay, so they're the only ones that have got, um, that have gone over. So let's talk about some of the combos. So uh, first thing to note is that when we go off with our rampant infestation. Let's talk first of all about going off on 6e, not 7e. So if we get to 6e, we can play this for six and that's all our mana used, okay? Now, um, the key with that is that we can't play any four drop troops on that turn. So we can't play the Nexus, we can't play the hybrid Metamorph, um, and we can't play the flank Gene Stealer. If we go off on E6, we can't play any of the four drops. And that's what you've got to bear in mind as you're leading up to E6. If we go off on E7, then we, we can play one four drop and then all of the three drops or less. So this is the first important thing to calculate when you're thinking about this deck. Now, the exception to that is uh, when we have the defense card, because the defense card allows you to refill bit like tactical insight used to be but refill your uh, energy by one so on e6 right we actually still can play one four drop if we've saved uh, our refill to for when we play the combo because we play the combo and then we can refill to one and then we can play for example a hybrid metamorph down first um, who will now cost one energy so that's the thing you've got to bear in mind all right now um, the question is always going to be when you go off to say which three drops have you got in hand um, and what is the current board state. So it's kind of difficult to go through every single combo, but I want to talk about a few. The first one I want to talk about is this guy, the hybrid Metamorph, who is absolutely exceptional. Now what this guy does, as I said, he has to, you have to do E7 or E6 plus the defense card to go off with this hybrid combo. And what you can do is you can play this guy first and then you're gonna play out all of your troops that cost zero. And basically this guy is gonna give himself plus two range attack and plus one health. And don't be surprised, I think I've had this guy up as high as like 23 range attack, like in 14 health or something stupid. like. It, you can get this, turn this guy into an absolute monster, an absolute giant of a powerhouse. Now, um, remember that I talked about changing one of the four stratagems to the perfect ambush. One of the reasons is that if you're going to go for the hybrid metamorph combo, if you play, for example, on 70 with a defense card, you could play this guy down, do the combo, and then you could stick perfect ambush on him, making him a, you know, 15 to 20 strong unit that is invulnerable that turn okay so that's the first combo and that one works really well against the likes of Eldar uh, against in, in the mirror match as long as it's not E8 so he can't steal it um, uh, things that don't have that kind of like really big hard removal 
Also, if you're playing against things that do have the hard removal, like the orcs, for example, then you want to try and get the perfect ambush off on that, if that's going to be the wing con. The other thing you can do is, in the big combo, when you play all your units that are free, because they've been reduced to zero, you can play the gene stealer down, familiar, next to him, meaning that he can actually attack. So if your opponent's got something really good on the board, this guy's now attacking with his 15 health with flank, taking out anything in the game. So that's the first uh, combo that we can play. Now, the second thing I want to talk about is the Legendary, which is the Neophyte Leader. Now, if you've got this card in hand, you're laughing because generally what I do is if I um, if I have this card, I play this first in the combo chain. The thing that's important, guys, is when you go off on Uprising is getting the order of the things that you do that place your cards in. That's where you mess up with the combo. That's where you do, you, you fail to maximize your efficiency. Um, and one of the things I do uh, if I have this card is playing first because every card we play afterwards will basically get plus one, plus one. Uh, to, so that's melee and range um, every time we play a card. So the first card that we play will get it and then we play the next, the second card and then all three cards, which is the Neophyte Leader and the first card we play, they all basically get that plus one and then every time we play a troop, everyone gets another plus one. So again, we end up with a massive, massive mountain of a board if we do that. Now, the next card I want to talk about is, um, oh actually, first of all, let's just talk about the Gene Stealer combo. So if uh, we went off like the hybrid, so the same condition for going off with him, which is, remember, E7, that's right, or E6 with the defense card, then instead of playing the hybrid metamorph, we can do the same combos, but we can play the Gene Stealer for one energy, giving us another flanker, okay? Now, the next uh, and very, very important um, thing that I want to talk about is the, where has he gone? The Neophyte Icon Bearer. Now, the Neophyte Icon Bearer, bearing in mind, once we've gone off with the, the big spell, this is going to cost us zero, because it's minus three, isn't it, to all of our troops. So this is going to cost us zero. And when we put this card down, which generally wants to be, um, often it's sometimes the first card, but if it's any of the ones I've just shown you, um, you usually put them down before this guy, because he'll then get the buff. But basically, this guy should go down as early as possible that you're able to then play an attack, even if the only thing you can attack with is your Warlord. Because if you attack with your Warlord, it's then going to create a Neophyte initiative, and it'll put that into your hand. The very next card that you want to play after uh, attacking and getting that in your hand is the Neophyte-ish initiative because the longer chain that you've got to come after this, the more pings, the more one damage that this uh, Neophyte initiative is going to do. So that's why we want to get the Icon Bearer down as early as possible and attack and then put the initiative down before we then flood the board with all of our units. And again, if we've prioritized the Neophyte Leader or the Hybrid Metamorph, they'll be getting their bonuses before the initiative. The exception is you might put the initiative down even before them if what's most important in the board state is basically doing the damage as opposed to setting up the buffs. So that's a little calculation that you've got to work out. And basically what's going to happen here with the Icon Bearer is every time you attack, you're going to get another one of those initiatives in hand and then you're going to put it down and then the initiative that you put down previously is going to ping and then you put another initiative down and then they're both going to ping and then you put another initiative down and they're both going to ping again and you're going to say yeah but bj what if i've only got um my warlord to attack i'm only actually going to generate one initiative back to my hand right and this is the final part of the combo this is where the flankers come in now we have got neophyte two neophyte troopers here they are flankers they're now going to cost zero and we may have more flankers because remember the turn before we went off we played the metamorph icon bearer and we have a 75 percent chance of choosing the neophyte trooper so what that means is that we can play once we play the icon bearer and attack with a warlord we get a neophyte down we play that on the board um with our uh, and then we play if we play our troopers they can then attack because they've got flank and as they attack we get another neophyte initiative so do you see the endless chain that we've got here of flankers coming down attacking and then the neophytes coming on and doing the pings 
So it is absolutely phenomenal. Um, there are other things like if the Nexus has um, stayed on, you have to bear in mind one of the cool things about Nexus is that um, is every time you cast a spell, it gives you plus one melee until your next turn. This is something I kind of overlooked. I thought it was just give plus one this turn, but it's until your next turn, which means you've still got the plus one when you're in your opponent's turn. So that's pretty good. So that's another uh, similar to what I've said for how you set up the hybrid, for example, or the gene stealer. Um, it's the same thing because obviously it costs four energy with the Nexus. Sometimes I've played this the turn before the combo, so it's still on anyway. So absolutely a uh, stack full of, um, of different combos. And then obviously once you've played those things down that I've just talked about in the combo, you then flood your board with all of your either non-uprising um, or non, uh, you know, non kind of damage dealing units. So that could be uh, your Neophyte Heavy, that could be your, uh, uh, your, bio, your Biophagus, or your Acolyte Hybrids, which are a good free drop, so you can drop them because they're not doing all on that turn. And what's really important is you always play your Uprising stuff. You never play an Uprising card last. It's not worded very well, but actually only triggers if you play another troop after you've played an Uprising card. So that's why we need these non-uprising cards to basically play uh, as the kind of finishers to the combo. So they're the combos. You're going to get to see all these in the gameplay. Uh, so don't worry. I'll walk you through it there. Now, in terms of the mulligan, uh, I would generally always keep um, any stratagem that we get. And the reason for that is if we get, let's say, perfect ambush, then what we can do is we're more guaranteed just on the very first time that we first turn that we basically draw a strategy and we're more guaranteed to get the rampant infestation obviously if we get the rampant infestation then what i tend to do is use uh, a Safa rihanna's ability to draw a troop and start drawing troops instead of stratagems so basically what you're doing is you're trying to draw a stratagem until you get the rampant infestation which you will always get if you've done this right and then you immediately switch to drawing troops where you can because by the time you go off in the combo the idea is you should have a full hand. You should have nine or ten cards in your hand when you are ready to go off on the combo, if that makes sense. Um, now, I will also keep things like Locus in hand. This is a card that can get you to E6. Really, really nice for kind of some early trades. Um, I also wouldn't be scared to drop an Acolyte Hybrid or even a uh, Neophyte Hybrid on E2. Or, although I do generally try, like to draw for a card if we can um, because I think we can get this really on the first turn. Another thing we can do on E3 is we can play the Living Icon and start attacking with our Lord and that draws us the troops that we need for combo but you just have to remember that and bear that in mind when you're trying to manage your hand size because sometimes you can kind of like overdraw when you do that. Um, another card that I would generally keep in my opening hand is the Gene Stealer because again helps get us to turn five. It's a nice flanker. Um, and the last but not least, I would also keep the icon bearer because we know that um, we generally want to be going off on this uh, before um, before we go off on the combo to fill our hand. Just have to bear in mind, if you are gonna play that, you definitely wanna play something out earlier. So play a Biophagus out or play a, uh, you know, one of your um, uh, other ones that we just talked about, like the Locust, for example. So that's the mulligan. Now, obviously the defense card, we always want, always want the refill card. Every single time, take the refill card, guys. I don't know why it doesn't show on here, but I can't remember what it's called either. But take the refill card. There's no other card that you want to get. I don't care how far you are on the forge, you always want the refill card. Now, the offense cards are really interesting with this deck because Space Marines, for example, if you, you want to take the Thunderstorm every time because um, if he's trying to beat you down, you don't need to attack with your Warlord, by the way. You never need to hit, just hit his face and trade two for two. Um, and if he tries to beat you down, and then you end up getting an extra mana, well, you can go off on the combo on your E6 combo. You can do it on E5, right? So um, it's really, really potent, really powerful, um, that one for us. Similarly, when you're playing Eldar, obviously we would take the one that starts the game on E3 instead of E2. Because essentially that gets us one turn closer to uh, a, a combo. Um, and against Chaos, I would also take the Warp. Is it Warp Storm? Which basically makes the first spell each turn cheaper. It's absolutely superb. Because again, 
our infestation can go off now on five um, and also our uh, ability to draw only costs one um, so um, I, I would I would 100% uh, be happy to take that um, in this uh, with this deck as well uh, okay now in terms of some alternative cards like I've already said you could run the five drop legendary um, I definitely think that things like the neophyte heavies you can put in there uh, as, as, as three drops um, I personally want to run a second Gene Stealer Familiar, but I don't have it. And I already told you about the um, replacement for the Perfect Ambush, which is the three drop, which gives you the extra um, plus two melee attack. Now, uh, a couple of cards that people ask me a lot, but BJ, why don't you run this card? Uh, so the, let's talk about that. So the first card that people go ask me about is Kelomorph. Now, Kelomorph is a trap in this deck, guys. Like, you... We'll draw this card every now and again in your hand and you'll just totally wish he wasn't there like he cannot form part of the combo what he is if you play him in a deck like this is he is like a last a last chance um kind of alternative wing con um and there's nothing bad about building alternative wing cons into your deck except for where they really seriously damage your main wing con and i believe this seriously damages your main wing con um you will you can put it in your deck and play five games and you'll see it does nothing for you in five games so I, I I don't know if Kelomorph, it's a really cool deck card, it's really well designed and I'd love to use it, but it doesn't fit in this deck. It doesn't fit in a combo, in this uber combo fast deck. So I would say the games are going to be finished by E7 and Kelomorph is a big waste of time. Now the other card that people ask me about is the Telepathic Domination. Telepathic Domination is one of my favourite cards in the faction. It is insane, this card. I stole a Monolith and won with it. I stole a right, uh, Hemlock with it and won. It's so good. The problem is that it is, first of all, remember our 4x4 rule, it is a stratagem, which means that we're drawing this, means we're not drawing our 6e card that can get us a combo off way earlier than we get to play this. Now, that said, what you could do is if you didn't want to drop player, for example, the 1e spell, you could actually put this in because you can afford to draw this on your first turn because you can go again and you could probably still get the, sec the 6e card by turn six if we have kept it to four stratagems. So if you really want a more late game alternative win con, if the combos don't go off, absolutely feel free to try that. I wouldn't be against that, um, but I wouldn't go above four stratagems. That is for sure. Um, so, um, and then the other card that people ask about, as I, as I kind of have already said, really is some of the five drops, including the Sanxus. And I'd say, I did start with Sanctus in there. It's not that bad to drop that on five the turn before uh, the, the the big shenanigan, but I'd rather play the, the stealth four drop or play this the turn before, um, rather than just playing this on its own into an empty board, where it's a bit easier to get taken out. So I don't think it is correct to run it. And in terms of the alt warlord, um, I'll just show you very quickly. Uh, what you can do is if you've got the beginner warlord, you can run something like this. Now the good news is if you run the uh, Malak Voreth for this is that um, because he can give himself plus one melee and range attack, you can actually deal with early aggro much better than my deck. Um, it can also obviously give, when you flood the board with a combo, you can use your warlord talent to give everything plus one plus one. So you don't need the three drop that gives the plus two boost, for example, because the warlord power does that. So the power ceiling in many ways is even bigger with this unit, this 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 approach. The other cool thing about this approach is you don't have to limit yourself to the four stratagems because you're not trying to automatically draw a stratagem. So that means your mix of uh, troops and stratagems can be different and you can play useful cards in the early game that help get you to that place. Things like or through you can have two of these to help you with removal for example uh, so in many ways like this is a uh, very very powerful i've run this deck too and done really well with it it has a very similar thing very similar combos but you've just got a little bit more um like i say inconsistency with drawing your rampant infestation what i found with this deck is that i was getting the combo off more on e8 on e9 um as opposed to always on e6 e7 so getting it off slightly later but we can play, as I say, some of these other spells and other cards because of that. So <clears throat> if you only got the beginner warlord, I would suggest going with something like that. Um, very, very, very powerful. Um, but my preference 
is the consistency. This deck is so consistent. It's unbelievable. All right, so with that said, just going to jump into uh, a very quick um, example, and then I'm going to get into some live gameplay for you guys to enjoy. All righty. Okay, so you can see here, essentially we've kept, we've got some three drops. We're not going to keep the six drop. Remember I talked about anything over four being a problem at times. We've got the perfect ambush. We're going to keep that. That means that, oh, and we already drew that as well. So when we've got this type of hand. Accept our gift of liberation or face the wrath of the star children. Holy fire, you shall be cleansed. So what we're going to do now is essentially we're going to draw for troops because we've already got really, really good um, spells, right? We've got the spells we want. We don't want any more spells, so we're going to draw for troops. And we're just going to basically try and tame his fate points for now. So he basically drops the Crusader. Okay, now, great three drop is Biophagus, Biophagus because it's got stealth. But down it comes, it's going to help us to compete with this board, which we obviously clearly need to do. That puts a possessed uh, a poison supplies in his hand and he kind of needs to deal with that otherwise it's going to stop his prayers. So he does decide to get rid of it and just deploy another crusader which is probably what I would have done there as well. Now we make quite an interesting play here. Uh, what we do is we actually decide to drop the nexus which comes down in stealth. But we actually, because we don't have any 4-drops that we're looking for, remember we talked about an E7 player or an E6 player with the Alien Idol. Because we don't have any 4-drops, we actually use the Idol now to basically make this Biophagus um, unkillable with the perfect ambush. That's triggering uh, the Artifice from Nexus, and it means that this is around next turn, which means next turn we can actually use uh, their... Uh, extra spells, the experimental bio horrors, and by playing stratagems, we'll get more benefit from the artifice from this as well. So, a nice little combo going on there. And that's all about helping us just keep up with pace, keep distracted, keep trading the board, keeping his faith down. That's all, all this is about. It's all about getting to the combo. So, we use our power to draw another troop really important that we're managing our hand and that we're drawing those troops and as we're using spells this turn because of the artifice that's on the board which is getting bigger and bigger and bigger and now we can play the armor down by the way notice that this makes uh, your warlord get bigger as well not just uh, not just your troops and we decided to hit uh, the Junith, as opposed to hitting the sister there because we want to keep the faith down. So now he brings on Big Flanker to help clear the board. Does no prey whatsoever. And this is pretty good. Now, obviously, if you look at the board, we've picked up a 4 drop. So if we want to go off now on E6, then we can't play that. So what I think we should do here is actually delay to E7. So we draw another troop. And this time we just basically going to drop what are we going to drop we're going to drop the locust that makes a lot of sense rather than dropping the save the flanker so we're going to drop the locust so we're ready to actually be able to attack which gives us another prop for the icon bearer because remember the icon bearer needs something to attack to put a near fight in your hand okay and now we're on e7 so now we can go off we start with the Rampant Infestation. Now we have got the Legendary 3 drop, so we're going to play that first. Then we need to get the 4 drop down, which is now only 1 of course. Now that will start growing every time. Now, got to get the... Uh, we actually get the Neophyte down next because we're going to maximise the amount of pings that we get off of this. Then we play the Icon Bearer, ready to start, because we're ready to now start attacking. Really important that we attack first and then put the next next uh, neophyte down. Let me know in the comments if you think 
on any of the games today I've done things in the wrong order because I certainly have on other games. I think we got it right here. We play the Neophyte down. Now we're also running out of board space, so this is the next thing you've got to look at. Am I going to get all my units down? And the answer is no, you're not. So you, now you've got to decide, well, what do you want to put down to finish? And I decided that I don't necessarily want to need more pings from the Neophytes, so I'll just save those in case he clears my board. And I'll just set up the hybrids, because they cost three energy, whereas the Neophytes will only cost one next turn. So might as well make use of the cheapening. And there we go. Check out that board, guys. Check out that board. And of course, what would be his normal AoE. Yeah, great. It does kill two units, but look at all this. And he's got 23 health. And of course, he concedes. Game. Mr. Endorfino. Have you used Eve of the Uprising yet? No, um, I'm not using that deck. There is a different... We did it in a practice match, and uh, even killing all our stuff off deliberately, it's still... We did play it, but it wasn't necessary at all, so... And he stunned our stunner. That's actually the best thing for him, that. Than in the Warlord, to be honest. Okay. Fight Trooper. We 
need another turn. Yeah, our problem is we need another turn, because we need to drop this, really. Maybe I should have done that. We can't, we can't afford to... We can afford to go another turn like this. I don't think we can. it again oh my god what is going on oh we didn't get the flankers again and then that hit the wrong one ah we just, oh, it's all gone wrong in this game like eve is not the pro eve is only contributing to our wars. If you think about what's going on in this game, Eve of the Uprising is, is doing nothing. You, if we were pulling off our combo and then not finishing off our opponent, that and they were taking the board and then stabilizing and winning, that's where Eve would be good. But it's doing it, it would just be hurting us even more in this kind of board state. If these were flankers, we've got this game won, but we, again, we failed the 75% test, which is, I don't know what's going on. I don't know how we've managed that. Okay, well at least we've got one here. Right, let's go. Right, the right way to do this is... Uh, probably you... Flank, or is it? That'll do. Yeah, I think it's 75% chance, right? Because um, we'll go and check, but I think there's four two drops. And you basically get a choice of three. And it doesn't give duplicates. So you're looking for... So it's showing you three, and there are four options. And you just look... You obviously just want it to be one of the three, right? And twice now, that's been the fourth one. <laughs> so basically, you can end up with an infinite loop. If you have the icon bearer as one of your three drops, we haven't done it yet, but you'll see. There's there's about, when I do the video, I'm going to explain, there's about five combos you're looking for. Like, obviously, what you just saw in there was the big guy combo. Um, okay. So, for example... Play this guy. And we just go... Wait, 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 wait.
So yeah, you, have, you end up with this combo where you play, if you've played the six drop, these guys are free. And then you have the flankers that come on and as they attack, that produces more of these guys and you end up in like an endless loop basically. Kaboom! So honestly guys, like we, we uh, if you think about that game, right, quite a lot went wrong and we still won. Like quite a lot went wrong, right? So f like even little things like we had the 50-50 on the near fight to ping the one with one health or the 4-4, we lost that. We had the 75% chance to get the flank because we lost that. There was another thing as well that we were favoured to do. I've forgotten now and we didn't do that. If I, I might go back and watch, I might pin that game and go back and watch it because like a lot went wrong. A lot went wrong. If you just even took a statistical average, uh, we were a lot went wrong there and we still won that game and we got 39 points so I'm guessing that was someone who was actually in a pretty good uh, two, yeah so he was just under 3k with, with he was just under 3k with um, with them as well so you know I wasn't even really taking note of his day. I might pin that game I might go back and watch that so yeah I mean like honestly guys um you can you can run the you can you can run the um you can play the second uprising and go with the Eve, but I I really don't think that that is. I just think this card's too slow, right? Like this deck's perfect for it because we, we're going to kill everything. Then we've even got the Lord that can draw these back through for free, which we did do. Remember, we ended up getting like a near fight and stuff. But um, I just don't think um. I just don't think it's needed. It's not that it's like bad value. It costs one thing, and it's but it's just that it's a card that we're just just not going to use. It's not going to the game's going to be done by the time it gets there. What I'm really interested in is a couple of things, like from this version, whether we should be running a Calamorph or a Telepathic Domination. I'm actually thinking that Telepathic Domination might might get the nod of a Calamorph. If I'm honest with you, the only problem is with Telepathic is it interferes with my four strat um, approach, right? Like, because it's a strat that would come through. So I'm not really sure about that, to be honest. I really like this. I mean, this guy's probably going to go once I get the second Gene Stealer familiar. Well, there's no probably about it. He's 100% he's going to go. The only thing I could do again is put... No, because it's another strat. No, I'm being disciplined on this. Right. Oh, lucky, lucky, lucky. We've reached the top of my B team. Reached the top of my sub bench, overtaking the Necrons. Interesting. So, we're at 2682. So, we need another 58. Well, 59 points, I guess, to go above the Tunids. Couple, of, couple, couple more big wins, maybe? 33 will do it. Let's go. <laughs> Hang in there, Nids. It's a squirrel. By the way, boys, the Collegium Magistrorum are looking for another member of the Alliance. So if you are someone who would like to join a really active Alliance that plays a lot and... I mean, we've got our own Discord. We 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 really quite active as a, as a team, which is pretty cool. We do a lot of co-piloting and sharing decks and stuff. We've got everybody getting pretty high scores. The, the, the main thing is you need to be able to commit to playing like four factions because we really want to play the new rank system and thoroughly. Okay, we got the Icon Bearer. This is very, very good to see. Um, this is very good to see. I don't think we need this. Do you know what? I actually think we can drop this card when we get the stuff that's, that we want. But I think we actually need it, to be honest. Oh, Godzilla man. What are you up to at the minute? Wait a minute, what? When a player earns a skull, their opponent draws a card. Oh, he's playing ambush as well. So, it's, you, you go melee, right, against the two draw. I mean, we have got the tempo opener here, right? Like, we can play this. This, this. And then we clear his board and we have two troops on the board. 
That's not bad. You know what? I quite like it. I'm not going to lie. That's a hell of a combo. Go on, play another ambush. Love to get rid of it in the fight. No, you're not going to, are you? Not going to do it, are you? Not going to do that. We're going to do this. Yeah, boy. Yeah, to be honest, Squirrels, I'm actually quite hoping that uh, this is going to be good enough to... Uh, get rid of. I'm just going to get rid of this one. Um, yeah, I'm hoping it does do... I, I'm hoping that this faction can be powerful enough to make my top four, is what I'm trying to say. Right now, I'm not convinced it can, but I'd really like it to be, because I'd really like to play this instead of Tyranids this season. Um, and that's not a knock on Tyranids' uh, power level or anything like that. It's just... I just... I'd just rather not play them. Um... I'm loving playing Anvir, I'm loving playing Grok. Um, and I want to enjoy this faction, so. Ugh. Oh, we didn't. Oh, we, I, I thought I had the ability to draw them, but obviously not. I mean, I guess I just, like, play this. Play this. I really want to keep hold of this flanker for the combo, but... It's duffing me up a bit at the minute. Armor. Yep. Love that. Love that card. Here we go. Alright, okay. Well on, then. Do your thing. Right. Uh, order, order, order. So, order is... Uh, important. And you definitely need to... Go down with this combination that we have. It's not actually the best, to be honest. Oh, no, 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 you idiot! I've done it wrong again! Oh, oh I just want to concede. I'm so annoyed. I've made the same mistake. The second they go down, this is meant to attack. Then you're meant to play the Neophytes because every card that comes after a Neophyte Such oh, an idiot. Yeah, I misplayed. I misplayed, misplayed, misplayed. Misplayed. Well, what can I say, guys? I'm an idiot. Oh. 
Yeah, Grook and Vian and Vian be my go-to for climbing, but I'm going to have a hard time picking him up after GSC. Why is that? Yeah, Pootis has just beat... I lost to Pootis yesterday. He's, he's just playing um, Scarabs, basically. Just farming Scarabs. And and that's the thing to do. If you just want to climb right now, like, play Scarabs, because everyone's trying this faction out and it sucks against Scarabs. It's almost like a 100% win rate for, for, for you, so... You know? Warlord takes three. Takes one. So what we want to find now is our plus is our three drop, right? So we're going to play, uh, draw a stratagem. Yes, I know. There we go. There we go, ladies and gentlemen. Right. What we do is we get rid of one of these. Oh no, we don't. Because we no. Let's just take it. Of ascension approaches. The day of ascension approaches. We got him, boys. We got him. Bye bye, kill him off. Um, hmm. Do I want to keep the neophyte? No, I don't. Do I want to keep the other two? Eliadu. Sell energy. So one of our four is in hand. Which means... Oh, Mr. Undo... Oh, hello, sir. We just beat you. You switched decks. I think we beat you. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I am wrong. Draw a stratagem, please. There we go. We had three stratagems in the deck. Two of them with the card we were looking for. 66% chance. Okay. What are we going to do here? We can't just sit around all day. So maybe we play you. Yeah. Do we cheat them and how? Question is, are we even gonna make it though? So glad you made it. We have got this guy. This guy's pretty good on turn five, actually, and then you go off on turn six. No, no. You would listen to me. On Putter, listen to me. When a player earns a skull, their opponent drops a card. Draws a card. Okay, so we're about to draw a card. So, in that case. Uh, um, uh, 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 uh. Let's do this. This, 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 this. 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 Let's just do this. Then... Not. No, what, what do we want to draw? What's in there now? We've got the boost. We've got another one of those in there. What's, this, what's the... F uh, two, three... What's the fourth one now? I'm forgetting what the fourth one is. Oh, um... Is to draw a thingy card, isn't it? No, I don't want that. I don't want that. I want to save this to be able to... I want to save this to be able to play a four drop when we go off. That's what we want to do with the alien idol. So you want to... We want to save this for turn six or E6. I want one of these, though. I mean... Honestly, maybe we just... Three, 
Can we kill that? Well, we can now. And do we cheat him and how? Do we just like... Do we even care if this lives now? Do we care? Do we want to take full damage with our face? No, we don't. There is no shame in losing to Nids as GSC. It's law accurate. Ha ha. Ha ha. That is true. I didn't even think about that. I legitimately didn't even think about the fact that I am literally facing the thing that we worship. What's that all about? I'll give up. Can't you see these troops you're supposed to be being distracted by? Okay, let's go. Let's go! Right, the first thing we do. The first thing we do is... We're not playing any artifice, so you're no good. So the first thing we do is we buff and we play this one. Right? Yes. Then we play. We play the flanker next. No. No, we don't. Play this. Then we play the flanker. Then we attack. Then we start playing neophytes, right? The problem with all of this is like. Okay. Can we do this? Yes. Can we do this? We're maximizing our near fights. Well, this guy's getting bigger and bigger and bigger. All right, he's big enough now. Just go. Boys, this deck. Look at this bad boy. Ah, <laughs> Mr. Swarm Lord. Who worships who now? Huh? Which way around is this worshipping going on? Oh. Oh, give up with you. With your silly. Absolute nonsense. If only I was running the one drop that just put all the troops back in my deck. Told you all I should be running that. Um. Ascension approaches. Wait, do we want to? Uh, can we just see the thing a minute? Do we want to heal here? I think we do. Because. No, actually, I'm not sure if that made any difference. 18. Uh, plus 2, right? So 4. Oh, come on, Maths Benjamin. 6, 4, 10, 28. Lethal. Yeah. Wait. 18, 22, 24, plus a ping. It doesn't actually matter, does it? Let's do it this way. Yeah, we had two ways of doing it. Alright, we got it. We got it. There were two ways we could do it. We could have done it with the, the buff, or we could have just played a troop and got the ping from this dude. Oh. Maybe. Kill him off. 
Solar Storm. Is that actually pretty good here? Kind of is, right? Oh, I don't know. Okay, so I think what we actually really want to do is draw troops now because we've actually got the strat that we need. So let's get some things to go with it. Made my version of this deck with Saffa, and the only stratagems are Living Icon, Rampant Infestivation, making it more reliable. Uh, that's what we've got, dude. Well, the only exception we've got is. So you have three, we've got four. We've actually got the card that gives everything plus two um, for uh, buffing a board. It's actually one of those quite a few games, that. So. It's a similar idea, though. I mean, if you think about it, every time I try and draw a strat, I, I have four, what was it, four? Four strats. Two of them are the one we need. So every time we do it, from turn one, assuming we don't have one in our hand, it's a 50% chance we get it anyway. So from basically pinging it twice before E6-7, we've, we've got it. We got it. Oh, baby, we got it. Uh, no rush. We want some better troops, though. I mean, these are good troops. I just want... Uh, what do I want with these? I'll tell you what we want. We want the Icon Bearer. Oh, no. Oh, no. Go away. Why, why are we playing Scarabs with this guy? I hate my life. Why? 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 Draw a troop. Oh, man. Do we just put that down now? I don't think we do, right? I think we need to maximize the turn that we flank. Uh. Do we put this down now? Uh. Nine, nine, nine. Do this. He just needs one, two, three, four. But even if I do this, got it anyway, right? One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, it's not worth it.
faked you out by pretending to be a cool Nemesar deck. <laughs> yeah, man. All right. Well, at least we can sort of like do something now. So let's let's go. I'm quite interested actually, because I was wondering whether this is the one deck that might be able to do something to a Scarab board. Oh, give up. Right, well, let's find out. Right, order. The order is important here. What have we got in our hand? We need to play you first. Such a shame we didn't find the... Um, I think we might have needed the banner, to be honest. So you kill that, you kill one of them, you kill him. You kill that. Kill that. So the answer is yes, we can we can uh, get rid of one wave, which is what I thought this deck could do. That's it. <laughs> we can't get rid of any more waves. But to whoever asked me in chat, this is where obviously the Gestalt Energy thing comes in, right? Because like next turn we just want to finish the game. Because we, we don't want to just keep cleaving wave after wave of these. Although, now he's done that, it's like not going to matter anyway. Okay, well we will, we will clear these then. And also what we'll do is play this. Right, hold up. So we clear this. Clear this. And we probably put this on face, right? Oi, BJ, do you want to know how to AoE with GSC? Oh, yes, please, Slither. Please. Please tell me how the hell I do it. Give me a troop. But not that one. Um, are you going to say backstab one of these? Is that the answer? Because that's a very... No offence, but... Very, very dull answer. That is it. But what we should do is... Probably hit this. I know we lose one damage, but we actually... Mm, no. No, we don't. We've got armour on, haven't we? But we'll do it that way. You backstab your own ma mine, yeah. Man, if that's the best we've got, guys. I mean, we don't run backstab in this deck, but yeah, fair enough. Holy schmoly. Okay. Think. <gasps> oh, hello. Uh. 
Yeah, so putting you down. And let's go you. You attack. No. I think we do. I actually think I'm gonna save that. Yeah, I think I'm gonna save that. So this is looking pretty good, boys. This is looking pretty good. Crystal energy, here we go. Three, four, five. We can draw a troop. Oh, give up. That's celebrating too early. Start healing here or something. Okay, kill you. Sure, no way we're attacking with face, right? Oh my god, it's probably one. He has used one. One drops, and he has used one AoE. God, I really can't wait to get the next Gene Stealer, the one drop. Can't wait to get that card, man. We get some missions done. Oh no. Oh no. Yep, good. Yes, boys. Yes, we got him. We got him. That's juicy. Um. Man, it's definitely like three, three changes I can make to this deck. So we get all the cards. Minecraft likes the ambush version of the deck a lot. I personally prefer Sabotage. I prefer Uprising so far. But early days. Early days. There we go, boys. There we go. We are in business. Consistency is key. Playing against... Andrax. Of the Panthers Club. This is looking more like a E seven go off. Oh, he's taking his time. Go on then, still my stunner. I would actually prefer you to stun my stunner. Stun my lord. That's the honest truth.
Yep, yeah, it's worked out good for you. The day of ascension approaches. Bad income. No, no, no. Still building up my collection. I've got a few epics and legendaries yesterday for Gene Circles. Nice. Are you pretty much starting out then with um, the Gene Stealer Cults? Is this like your first faction or? Ambush is quite cool, to be honest. Steroid mutants. Indeed. Is there like a reason to go now? Not really, is it? Two seven fifty right now with two factions. Well, that's pretty good. Yeah. See, this is the thing, isn't it? I do think the Vanguard might be key to the ambush. It's interesting because it's not a very good. Oh, oh, oh! This is cool. Okay, let's get this in the right order. Right, here we go. So, rampant infestation. Yep. Then uh, we want to go booster for one, so we can get this guy down. Okay. Then we want this guy. Then we want to attack. The reason we want to attack is because we want this guy to go down. Then we need the flank to go down to trigger. I might have put him in the wrong position there, though. I'm not going to lie. Then we put this guy down. And then it probably doesn't matter, right? So we can do this. Just need to make sure that this guy is it is it this guy no that's not going to be enough is it so I'll make this one go kill this kaboom check it out boys check it out hmm this time we haven't got. Um. Hmm. This time we haven't got the thing, so I think we don't keep that when we don't have the thing. Yeah, I don't think we keep that. Oh yeah, much better having that. Do we? What do we do about acid rain? This swarm mod. It's not. I think we take Acid Rain still though, right? I don't know. I'm really not sure about that. Uh, but what we do need... Stratagem. There we go, boys! There we go! We're on. We are on. 
Right, I'm going to eat some crisps. If it sounds really horrible, me chomping down the phone, let me know. I might just move this a bit. This down as a, we'll just chuck this down as a distraction here, I think. I mean, it actually kills him if he trades into it, right? So... Yep, that's good. There's five that's not hitting us in the face. More than happy with that. More than happy. Yeah, good. Yeah, good. Good, 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 good. Okay, let's go. So.
Oh shucks, we had one of these. Okay, we did it wrong. And I keep messing this up, it's really frustrating. Alright, so first of all, what should we do? That gives me a near fight, see? That's why you should attack first, because you need to get the near fight back down. Near it. The day of ascension approach. Guess we just do this. Put this down. We're not going to get the other flanker down. We don't need the other flanker. So we'll go for the extra near fight and ping. Getting the order right is the trick to this deck. of ascension approaches indeed just so insane right so insane So has anybody got any questions about this deck? Just hit me up in chat. Is Uprising your favourite playstyle with GC? Well, so far it is, dude. I mean, we've only had it a couple of days. Um, and I would have to say that so far... <gasps> oh! Gellamorph! We almost got him off, but not quite. The day of ascension is broken. I mean, we just do this. Obviously, we could make this guy ginormous, but there's no need. And it's certainly, uh, it's certainly the most powerful deck I've I've come up with so far. Yeah, so it's like Gwent in that when you hit pro rank, you that's when you start get doing this have to play four factions thing. And honestly, I think once you hit legendary, like, yeah, if you've only been, if you're still collecting and you, need, it, I can understand like a bit of short term frustration, but long term for the game, it's going to be way better. Just think about last season. Just think about, like, so many people just stopped playing until the Ultramarines got nerfed. You wouldn't have that problem in the new system. Hello, hello. Rampant infestation, vertigo. I mean, this is just consistency of it is so good. It's so good. So, Gwent, you had to play a minimum of 25. This is why I'm saying about having number of matches played as well. Gwent, you had to play 25 matches for your score to qualify. So, if I played 24 matches with Chaos, I couldn't count my Chaos score. Now, I actually think it might be an improvement doing what they've done. Like, not forcing that on people, quite frankly. So, I'm, uh, I'm fine about that. Um, let's do this. Me armor. Let's do this. Draws a troop. Yeah. <laughs> 
there wasn't a max rating. I mean, if you just kept winning and playing, you could go higher. But basically, similar to what they've done here, which is what I love, is having your top score versus your current score, your peak, or your peak score versus your current score. They did that, which is brilliant. Ah, now we can't drop this, can we? We drop that because we're at what? 10 cards. So if we drop this, we only get one of those back. Maybe in this game we use it to refill somehow. So yeah, um, I totally love it. Like, getting around like binary metas and basically meaning that more decks get played, which means you've got more decks to play against. I also like the personal challenge of it, like really thinking about not just oh, what's the best deck, I'm going to play it all season, but what am I going to do for this faction? What am I going to do for that faction? Which, which four do I want as my four? Like, it just brings in all these mini-games, which just... Yeah, it's just fun. Just fun. I think we need some I think we need more better troops though. Like we're still in a weird I don't think we're ready to go off here. I have to do like a So if we did like draw a troop, where are all the good troops? Kind of weird this this time this hand. Um. Okay, we might have to do this in two waves. We just might have to do this in two waves because it's just all getting a bit weird. So first of all... Well, let's do you. Maybe we save the flankers here. Oh, maybe we do one flanker. Uh -huh. yeah. We can kind of refuel off of this. We've got the second one. Draw troops still. He's still drawing his troops. With his living icon. Yeah, I think this needs to be a two wave game. Interesting. Good because it's gas control, isn't it? So he's got the armor and everything. So he can last longer as well, potentially. Yeah, this feels like a let me survive one more turn so I can will of gawk you in the face kind of turn. <laughs> We've got to be really mindful of that. Okay.
Let's just do this because this refuels anyway. Now we can do this. And we can just hit him in the face with this. And we've not overcommitted really, and we've refueled our hand. So I'd be quite happy to see a Will of Gork here, if I'm honest. In fact, I'd be very happy to see a Will of Gork here. And I feel like if he's got it, he's got to do it. Okay. Squeak buggy. Well, that ain't saving you, buddy. That ain't saving you. This is a trap though. So 5, 9, 10, 11, 12, it's not enough is it? It ain't lethal! I think we do... could do that. No, we could do. We could draw our invulnerable stratagem. Yeah. Yeah, I like this. Let's put let's play this and make it invulnerable. So that means that there's no will of gore. None of that shenanigans. Yeah, I like this. I like this line. It's now Willagork and Mark, Mark and all that stuff. Fucking about. None of it helps him. Seeing the way of the first stratagem. Yeah, that doesn't help you, buddy. Well, I suppose it does if it hits that. Well, there's no point going more in because if he's got Will of Gork, then we die. If he hasn't got Will of Gork, then we win. So, there's no point, is there? Okay, here we go. Save. Now we don't have a few refuel. I played this wrong, man. I, I, I played this wrong. I think we needed to draw out Will of Gork before. For the refuel. Save that for next turn, I think. Play this. Play this. Let's 
to flank us. Yeah, stop. I don't know. I think I've lost. This is actually the one matchup. One matchup where a Kelamor or the Steeler thing would actually be good. There are no tournaments for this game, right? Well, not really. Not yet. Currently looking at uh, arranging some things around that, but we're just trying to figure out like the right way, like the way we want to do it. EG support that and stuff. Right, okay, here we go. Bloody loser. Ascension approaches. Okay, you will have got that again. Oh, do you go the squig buggy route here? Squig buggy Makari would kill both the standards. Day of Ascension approaches. Oh man, there's so much to this matchup. Like, I really want to just play this matchup 10 times because these guys are actually really, really important in this matchup. Not sure whether I should have put that last one down. I was wondering what you were doing. Uh, I got three Neophyte leaders playing as Magnus, lol. <laughs> it can happen. That is the thing about that Warlord. Oh, explosions are nice. Explosions are very nice. Pyro, yep, okay. Yep, 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 I see what you're doing. And heal, okay. Okay. Yep, you're gonna kill the other one now. Probably by hitting the face. Huh? <gasps> did you just forget to kill the other one? Please tell me you... Oh my god. <gasps> you did not just do that. You did not... That. The day of ascension approaches. Right, we're gonna do this smart now. So what we're gonna do is hit this. That gives us enough hand space for these guys. Right, and then we go. Don't. The day of ascension approaches. That's it. This one. This is another one. By the way, I actually really want to... Oh, no, you did play this. Wait. The day of ascension approaches. in the wrong place. Oh, hit, 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 damn it. Hit. Yes. Oh, gas goal control fatigue taken down. We count the rocks now. Well, we, we just did. <laughs> the day of ascension approaches. I do apologize, guys, but you can probably expect me 
to uh, be saying that quite a lot. Oh my lord, look at this. This hand. The day of ascension approaches. Do you know what? We will start with an extra card because we are a combo deck and we already have a couple of key pieces and we're missing troops. So we'll, we'll take that extra card and then we'll do this and then we'll draw a troop and then we'll say end turn. But first of all, we'll say the day of ascension approaches. Basically, if you say it at the end of every turn, I think, then eventually the Day of Ascension will approach and you'll win with a massive combo. That's how this deck works. Kind of the deck guide done. That's all you need to know. <gasps> oh, yes. Oh, I'm already. That was a mistake. I should have hit there. Okay, but I'm still excited. Excited. Uh... Let's drop this one, I think. The day of ascension approaches. Dear BJ, I was on high volume. <laughs> I apologize profusely. Profusely? I should use big words. Um, to your ears, Cosmo. It's almost harvesting season. There you are, man. I'm bloody excited here. Hold up. What are you going to do here? Trading, so you're not faithing and all that jazz. Good job, good job. Okay, that's fine. We're going to do this. The day of ascension approaches! Do we want to hit you? No, we don't. Why would we do that? What is the best warlord for Gene Stealer? This one. She is my darling, Safa Rihanna. Oh, the single ladies. Yeah, she's great. Um, What do we want to do here? We probably want to get this on, right? And then we want to draw a troop. Oh my god, boys. Boys, this... This is... This... Oh, boys. This is a game. This is a game. This... This is going to go off so goddamn hard. I'm, I'm even tempted to wait for turns. <laughs> Maybe I'm being greedy. Am I being greedy, boys? Day of Ascension approaches! Uh. I'm gonna be greedy. I mean, honestly, guys, obviously, I could have just gone off there, so. Whatever. But I just. I don't know. I'm just gonna do this. I, I just, I just want to get rid of this. I, I, it's probably a mistake, to be honest. I, I think that was probably like, probably too, too greedy. The day of ascension approaches. Yeah, maybe we should have gone off last turn. Oh man. Yeah, that was greedy. That was very, very greedy. Don't even draw cards here. Oh, BJ. Why are you so stupid? Yeah, that was stupid. I admit, it was stupid. Should have gone off last turn, and now we've lost. Oh well. Uh, near fight. We don't have any flankers either here. This is the problem. The day of ascension approaches. The day of ascension approaches. Oh, why didn't I go off last turn, man? I actually won the game. Look at this, boys. The day of ascension approaches! Okay. Uh, 23. Does that say 23? 
<laughs> well, I hope you got an answer, because you have got eight faith, so you probably have got an answer. Has he got that one card? Has he got the one card? <laughs> if he's got the one card, we, we concede. If he hasn't got the one card, good luck getting rid of that board, because I have one card on this board that has lethal pretty much with my warlord, and that is this one. Oh, he hasn't got it, boys! <laughs> he hasn't got it. But wait. Has he got lethal? <laughs> As if I just played that into the thing. <gasps> oh, my lord. All right, but what you... Are you actually going to, like, aid, right? Yeah, you got to kill that. Take 23 damage. Maybe I should have just put perfect ambush on that. Probably should have done it, shouldn't I? Yeah. Yeah, why play the last one? I could have just put perfect ambush on that and won the game. That was a massive misplay on my part. Because even if he had the hard removal, we won the game then. I didn't need that last one. Oh, boys, we mi I messed up. I could have just played that. GG. I mean, don't get me wrong, I'm still very confident we're going to win this game, but you see what you see what I'm saying, don't you? What I'm saying is, the day of ascension approaches. Okay. Time to get serious, boys. Time to get serious. I actually think... This one might be good now. matter anyway we had it oh this is worse than the chaos pact i mean worse in a positive way lethal it's too powerful oh lethal on board yeah i had lethal on board oh even when we went off like we didn't actually have the right stuff so yeah it's not great but yeah you might be right it might just not be a good match as well this this is nice thunderstorm the day of ascension approaches. Go on then. Good player. We get some nice points off of this dude if we win. The day of ascension approaches. You know what we need to do, boys. You know what we need to do. For the Emperor and the Primarch. Shut it, map it. Your fate is sealed. Indeed, indeed. Don't kill me. Don't kill me. Stern guard. For the Emperor and the Primarch. How rude. Do I just heal? I'm gonna heal. Am I gonna heal? That's ridiculous. That's probably ridiculous. Uh. <clears throat> Just drop this guy. I'd rather do that next turn. Though. I don't know. Strat or ah, oh, let's go troop. Should we draw a second one of these? Then it's not going to be good. Oh, I don't know. Else getting low. But do you know what's funny, boys? Is if he hits me again, we get plus one buff, and we could actually go off. Trust in the Emperor at the hour of battle. There's no could about it. We are going to. Does he do it? He's got to do it. You're an aggro deck. You've got to do it. You've got to do it. 
Man, if you... Yeah, I was going to say, like, that would be... That would be next level marine play if he'd not gone there. And even then it would be bad, because he's Dexter's. He's got to do it. And then we go like this. The day of ascension approaches! Here we go. So comes you. the moment of deliverance. Uh, we do need to... Oh, okay, we're going to try and do it off the near fight then, because we don't have any flankers. So we put, drop the near fight. The day of ascension approaches. The Grizzle Pit and I have created such wonders to fuel our ascension. The day of ascension. Come on, things. Kill the thing. No, why are you hitting the wall, or dude? The Grizzle Pit and I have created such wonders to fuel our ascension. Oh my God! Look, are you seeing this, guys? Just average, just average hits, and we would have finished this thing off, and instead we've now just lost the game. Oh, just average numbers. The day of ascension approaches. So, have you got six from hand for five, basically? That is the million dollar question. Blank shot. Wait. Oh, okay. So if he does his hero power, that's five, seven. No, that doesn't do it. Go from above. Four, eight, ten. I don't think he's got it. I don't think it's possible. What he can do is make himself immune for a turn. Do it next turn. The reckoning shall Boys! Come. The day of ascension! <laughs> yeah, so you can totally run this deck with the starter warlord. I've, I'll, I've got the version. I'll show you in a minute. You know, the, 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 the difference is as well is you can actually put some of the good stratagem, a few more of the good stratagems in the if you run the starter warlord because you're not worried about like with this one we have to be super disciplined because um, oh we've got the combo. That's a combo, by the way. Neophyte, into familiar. Ping for one. Make him flank. 2-2. Two, two. Yeah, so you can actually get away with, like, some... Uh, uh, what's the 2e one? Removes. Like, you can put a few, few stratagems the in. The anti-armor card. Ready, my legions. A glorious victory will be mine. Gosh. The day of ascension approaches. So yeah, it's uh, yeah. it's a little bit different, but kind of similar. All right, we're gonna go with um, the living icon here because we've drawn this one first. This is now how we're gonna get the troops. Nice. Oh boy. Oh boy. We just need the strap boys. We just need the strat. Yeah, no, this up, the uprising deck's very good. I'll show it you after this one. It's just the the problem is if you don't like it's just a little bit more inconsistent, right? Because if you don't draw obviously the six drop by say E seven eight whatever, yeah. then whereas this this gets it. And I kind of don't want to, kind of like don't want to curse it because, as you can see right now, we actually don't <laughs> have it. Like we've got to be so unlucky. Oh my god, we didn't get it. I need to stop talking. So basically, we've got four strats. We've drawn twice. And we've drawn the other two. The other two are the ones we're after. <sighs> Never fear. The day of ascension approaches.
Yeah, it's good. It's good with uprising because obviously the plus one plus one is just massive when you go wide. Like, so good. The day of ascension approaches. We bring you the Star Children's Blessing. Star Children's Blessing. We bring you their blessing. Yeah. Or runs up. Get ready, my friend. All I'm going to say is get yourself ready. Right, we have to draw. This is what I mean about consistency, right? Look, it's the turn before. We still haven't got it. But now it's 100% guaranteed. That's what you want. Your fate is sealed. Oof. Right, let's have a think now. So this one's going to be... These guys going down. No, near fight, then these guys going down. Then attacking, then near fights, then everything else. You all see that? Try and guess the order, boys. Try and guess the order. Which guard? Oh no, that's so annoying. That's quite annoying because we can't trigger the. Um... Right, to be honest, we actually probably only need one ch one charger, so it's not too bad. Gonna mill a card, boys. What's it going to be? I hope it's the three drop that we didn't want in the deck. That's what I'm hoping it is. The one that does two damage. I mean, two in his win uprising deck and Scarab's win sabotage deck. I mean, we have beaten some two in his, so I don't know about that. Right, here we go. So we said this first. The day of ascension approaches. Uh... Actually, no, we should have done this first. No, that's okay. That's okay. So comes the moment of deliverance. For each one of us that falls, a hundred more will rise. The day of ascension approaches. Uh. Let's just, uh. Yeah, let's just do that, that's fine. The day of ascension approaches. I think we're gonna save one of those actually. Give praise to the master below. I don't know. The day of ascension approaches. Whatever. I'll do. The day of ascension approaches. See, obviously, we had that we could throw in and give something charge. My legions will so be reborn. So if he had a big unit, is inevitable. but he didn't have a big unit, so. Accept our gift of liberation or face the wrath of the Star Children. Star Children. We have no choice but to fight. Oh, baby, look what we got. Let me hear it. Let me hear it in chat. The day of 
the ascension approaches. The day of ascension approaches. The Grizzle Pit and I have created such wonders to fuel our ascension. Such wonders to fuel our ascension. <laughs> The day of ascension approaches. Uh. Kindred, at the ready, the plan moves forward. Kindred, at the ready. I'm gonna try that, bud. Don't have any of the most important card. Oh, yeah, the beginner um, warlord one. Do you see so? On, but I've completed all the daily skull missions until 100 for two days in a row. They're all a lot, they are a lot of fun. Yeah, they're a lot, it is a lot of fun. I think that's... That is a really good point. Like, that is super important, right? Fun is good. The day of ascension approaches! <laughs> Daka daka daka. Need the the card that reduces the cost by three. Yeah, I mean this is sent. Obviously, this is critical. There is slower ways that you can play uh, Uprising using the six drop that just reduces cards by one, and um, obviously uh, Sephiroth. The AE. It's also a thing. I will topple the walls of the oppressor. I will topple the walls of the oppressor. Right, the dream now. The dream now is that I'll get a four drop true. That is actually the dream. Projecting energy field. That is all I want in life. Just a four. Just a four energy true. There we go. We got the dream, boys. The day of ascension approaches. Ready? The day of ascension approaches. The day of ascension approaches. So comes the moment of deliverance. Honestly, we're not actually going to get uh... The day of ascension approaches. I mean, it's a bit overkill, really. Fusillade, we die. Against the tower, we probably, we probably didn't need to go, like, pulling. We probably should have thought a bit harder there. I mean, this is the thing about it. I'm playing the deck 
it's not even like I'm playing the deck at an advanced level because I should have been playing around Fuselade there and going like, do I really need to maximize the amount of pings I can get? And do I really need a four drop flanker there? I didn't. So I've thrown away value to his AOE when we didn't finish the game anyway. I actually played this one quite bad, is what I'm saying. The day of ascension approaches. But still. Daka Daka. Beauty can leave deep scars. GG. The day of ascension approaches! We're nearly at the 3k mark, boys. We are nearly there. Yeah, I just... I just... We could have played around with you. We just didn't need... You don't have to go all in. You can go all in and do these amazing combos, but I think it's about, like, recognising where... Half of that was enough. And then actually having the refuel for the next turn... Much better. Turn one, we probably don't want that one. We don't want the four drop going when we're going first. When we're going second, we do because we can use the. Th oh, 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 Marjorie! Let's do it, Marjorie. Accept our gift of liberation, or face the wrath of the Star Children. The hour of blood and clashing blades has come. Age of Ascension approaches. The Age of Ascension approaches. That one wasn't bad. I'm not gonna lie. The shadows are always vigilant. The shadows are always vigilant. In this, he speaks the truth. I think we can just do this. The grizzle pit and I have created such wonders then we can play the metamorph icon bearer. Ascension. And that means, ladies and gentlemen, that we refill the hand. I don't know. I don't know. Might be right. Might be an E7 to... Oh no, we got the icon bearer, haven't we? So we can basically supercharge neophytes. Good if we can. Uh, oh, okay. <laughs> As I say, it'd be good if we can play around the um, Eldritch Storm a bit. But... Hold still. Hold still. The Age of Ascension approaches. He's no more approaching a Ascension deck. Oh man. Come on, Daka Daka Daka. Thanks, please. That's that. I would like the three drop legendary. That would be my preferred. The age of ascension approaches. I pray with swift demise. I pray with swift demise. Okay, well this is good. We need units to... If we have units to attack, then it's really good with this combo. When you've got the Icon Bearer and the Flankers, this is exactly what you want. So, 
Yeah. It's pretty good. To be honest, we're probably not really going to get to hit these anyway. Might get to flank a stone, but I think we're just going to die to pingers. Oh, wait a minute. Do we want this, though? Do you know what? Maybe we do. Maybe we want to go next turn. Do we want to go now or do we want to go next turn? Make haste! Ascension! I think we want to go next turn you. against Eldar, right? I think against Eldar we want to go next turn. Because We'll take this one. Yeah, I think we want to go next turn against Aldar because um, we really want a big unit at the end of it all, right? Like, so if he Eldritch storms, like it doesn't hurt the big unit. I don't know. Could be wrong. There's no concern Rise, if we're all in the club the together, right? Needs you once more. Are you not scared that your wife and son will hear you? They might think you're joining a cult. Well, I will be ending stream very shortly because I will be going to attend bath time, I believe. And I just got back, so... The Age of Ascension approaches! Right. Big lad. Then we do this. For each one of us that falls, then we just do a normal a attack. More will rise. Then we put a dude down. The, the day of ascension approaches. I'm getting the words wrong. I must be. The day of ascension approaches. Give praise to the master below. Give praise to the master below. Give praise to the master below. The day of ascension approaches. None can deny the star children's deliverance. can deny the star children's deliverance yeah and I think I'll actually just save these guys that's enough right the day of ascension approaches. 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 If you are not all hearing that in your dreams tonight, I, I, I just haven't done my job well. The day of ascension approaches. Yep, that would be a very effective use of stun. I agree. Take two damage. Surround them. Strangle them like the serpent. Right, what we want is things with two health to attack first and die. And they'll put loads of near fights in. Oh man, this is cool. This is going to be like a proper shotgun city. The day of ascension approaches. Living icon on. Draws a card. Oh, 
Are we going to win with shotguns? The day of ascension approaches. We're going to win with shotguns. Here we go. Are we ready? The day, the day of, of ascension, ascension approaches. approaches. The, day the day of ascension approaches. approaches. <laughs> I love it. I love this deck. There we have it guys, that is the deck and the games, I hope you enjoyed seeing those wacky combos going off, still learning the deck, still got a couple of cards I want to change. Uh, one thing I did not mention, uh, which a few people were asking me about, uh, was about this card, the Eve of the Uprising. So the idea with this card is that um, when we go off on these big combos, uh, we can basically use this to then put, uh, if we don't win the game, uh, you can basically put uh, up to five of those troops back into your deck and because we played lots of things that cost three or four essentially this reduces it, the cost uh, so it's almost like playing the six drop they become out as free again and you could kind of keep doing the waves now in theory that makes sense and that would be really good if we were being dragged out into the late game and our combos were enough but it's very very slow and quite frankly as you just saw in the gameplay we don't really need it we generally do end the game when we get the first combo off uh, few exceptions the gas goal match and a couple of those but mainly we don't so we don't really need this and get and or get much value from it but if the game does slow down and think people are able to kind of clear your waves then this is definitely a tech card that you could put into a slower meta anyway i hope you've really enjoyed this video i certainly enjoyed making this one uh hit that thumbs up for me if you enjoyed it like and subscribe and all that jazz and uh, let me know in the comments uh what you think and guys i uh i will catch you in the next one